When people think of fancy wines or a wine to gift, oftentimes we reach straight for Bordeaux and there's so many options out there. We have a bit of Bordeaux and um, we have wines from Italy, Spain, a couple of white wines here. What I'm going to do is explain why you pick one over the other and um, a couple of helpful tips and just some good gifting ideas. So we have two whites, uh, Spain, Italy, and a little bit of France. France is quite classic, so I feel like you can't just discard it and say, oh, that's too boring. There's great ideas there. And um, for the two whites, we have white wine from Burgundy. And aside from Chablis and Sancerre, which are quite classic, there's lots of great value and interesting wines to choose from. So I've gone for two from Burgundy. They're both the Chardonnay grape. And um, very cliche for me is outstanding value for money. When I first tried that wine a few years ago, it, now it's in the 25 euro price point, um, I thought it tasted like 35 euro. I smelled it and I was like, wow, this smells special. Um, it's for someone who likes Chardonnay or Burgundy or those fancy white wines. It's got a little bit of oak, beautiful citrus flavors, and um, a little bit of toastiness, a little bit of butter, just really gorgeous. Um, beside it is Poulini Monoche, and that is kind of like the bigger sister or the bigger brother quite a few steps up, you'll see this is a premier crew. Um, so just a quick thing about white burgundy. The words can be really confusing on the label. What do I get? What would I go for? The reason we've picked Poulini Monroche here um, is because it's the most crowd pleasing style of white burgundy that I think is out there when you're going into that fancy level. The other end of the spectrum is Merceau and it's just huge, big, blockbuster oak. This, you're more guaranteed chance of 100% success because it's a little bit more toned down while still being really elegant and beautiful and rich. It says Premier Crew. What does Premier Crew mean? Premier Crew refers to the place. We'll talk about Rioja next. Rioja refers to the oak and how it's treated. Premier Crew refers that someone has pre-decided that that piece of land is better than everything else around it. That's what makes Premier Crew better. It's not just meaningless words on the label. It means the land where it's come from has something exceptional about it. So, red, Rioja, Gran Reserva. For me, Gran Reserva is probably one of the most white, like what most um, reliable wines for a couple of reasons. So Rioja is a place, the grapes are Tempranillo and Garnacha in general. And then there's a few standards of Rioja. Um, but when you see the words Crianza, Reserva and Gran Reserva on Rioja, they are directly referring to how the wine is aged in oak. And what I would say about that is, although they don't guarantee quality, they imply quality. Because if the winemaker has gone through all this extra effort to age it in oak, to, to spend the money on aging it in oak, to spend the money on sitting on the wine rather than selling it and turning it into cash, there must be something special about it. Grand Reserva is only produced in exceptional vintages and it must have spent two years aging in oak and three years aging in the bottle before it's released. So it's already mature, it's already got all those lovely mature flavours about it. Um, and you know there must be something special there if the winemaker has gone through all that effort. So Rioja Grand Reserva is a great one and you know it's got the structure in it because it legally has to have gone through a few processes. The next one I have here is a Lange Nebbiolo. Um, so Rioja Grand Reserva you're looking at 30 euro plus thereabouts. Um, the net from Italy, like what do you get from Italy that's guaranteed fancy, guaranteed impressive? Um, Barolo is one of them. And what I've done here is rather than go for the Barolo which you're looking at 40 euro plus, I've gone for the kind of the little sister, the declassified Barolo. So look out for the phrase Lange Nebbiolo. Because what that is, is uh, grapes from what would have gone into Barolo, they weren't deemed good enough to go into the Barolo, but good enough to go into what is effectively the second wine. And for me, it's the best value for money that what you can get from Italy. And the thing is what you're looking for with a gift. It's not just something delicious. You want value for money at every price point. Whether you're spending 10, 15, 50 or 500, what is good value for money? For me, at the 25 euro, thereabouts price point, you get that um, those beautiful things that people love about Barolo. So it's kind of rose petals and cherry with savoury notes and thyme and dry and tart and rich. 
but without paying all the extra money. What you get out of it is a bit of instant gratification, which is sometimes what you're missing when you go for those fancy Italian ones. You want it to taste delicious now. You don't want to have to wait two years because let's face it, you're probably going to open it now. Um, you're not going to wait. And um, The next one I've gone for is a Crow's Hermitage. A Crow's Hermitage is from Rome. And Rome is split into two. You've got Northern Rome and you've got Southern Rome. Southern Rome, famous for Chardonnay de Pap. I've picked out one from Northern Rome. It's 100% Syrah in Northern Rome. Syrah is the same grape as Shiraz. Now, Shiraz in Australia tends to be like 14.5% alcohol, really big, really rich, really beefy. When you get to Rome, the, the French counterpart, they tend to be elegant, um, although medium to full bodied, just more refined in the flavour, the mouthfeel. Um, so this particular one, it's gorgeous, it's kind of dense and dark and black fruit with a little bit of spice, really soft, really easy to drink. For me, a great wine if you're going to um, have something special, maybe for Christmas Day. It's a great wine. It'll be able to hold up to all those big flavours without overpowering any of them. It's a very nice one. Um, then for Bordeaux, we've just gone straight out. We've got the big guns out. It's a lynch badge. So when you look at Bordeaux, you can spend a tenner, you can spend a 15, you can spend 150 and you can spend 500. So this wine, lynch badge, um, this retails at 150 euro. And it's from Poyac. So when you look at Bordeaux, there's a lot of fancy stuff there. How do you distill? What's worth it fancy? What's fancy that I'll understand and appreciate? And what is just buying something that no one's ever gonna understand? Be too intimidated by how much it is to ever open it so it stays somewhere and it's wheeled out for people to look at. Lynch Badge has this brilliant Irish kind of association with it as well. Obviously there's Lynch on the label. Um, the family there, uh, They've done a really brilliant job in making wines that are accessible, understandable, delicious, and yet um, are fancy enough. And so it's 150 euro. Why is it 150 euro? The land and its ability to age and how good the wine is and the grapes are from that particular place. Um, so for me, this wine, it's really impressive when you give it to someone. Everyone in Ireland, because it has such strong link to, to Ireland and um, a lot of Irish people who are into wine will, will know the name and they kind of put it up in this kind of you know top of the throne god I wonder what it tastes like wine so it's a great one to give and um, we have the, the lynch badge and then we have the little brother which is echo the lynch badge which is 100 euro cheaper thereabouts so you can do both and um, it can age so if you were looking to give someone a wine to, to have for you know to mark at the birth of a child to open on their 18th birthday or to open on their 25th wedding anniversary get this bottle give it to them tell them to lie it sideways and um, and it will taste amazing and they'll really enjoy it and a lot of the times i get asked oh i've got this wine it's been under the stairs for 10 years and they show it to me like oh you should have drunk it like eight years ago and um, this wine will last it'll stand the test of time and lastly but by no means least is pomard from burgundy so what we have here is syrah um, Cabernet and Merlot blend and Pinot Noir so we've got like the holy grail of the best grapes in France um, and this one Pomar it's, so it's definitely in the medium bodied territory but with that kind of intensity of fruit that you would you wouldn't think it's as light as it is because the intensity of flavour is so strong Pomar is classic red burgundy this is a premier crew and again like what i was saying earlier premier crew directly relates to the land the land is so good that what comes out of it you'd have to be a really bad wine maker to not make it good basically um, and this is gorgeous it's kind of violets and lavender and perfume and undertones of these really dark dense red fruit flavors and a bit of oak so anyway burgundy bordeaux rome italy spain something fancy white wines white wines for me i tend to stick with the classics because the non-classics tend to be a bit quirky i hope that gives you some ideas and some tips and is helpful